So today, I'm gonna do a little scouting, fishing, mission on the bay. We're on foot today. My skiff's in the shop. Have a negative 0.9 low tide today. So you can pretty much walk wherever you want in the bay. It's normally about two feet deep where I'm standing. And today it's barely over my ankles. So I'm walking back into this spot and what happens is when the tide goes in and out this sandbar separates the water around both sides of it and makes it run almost like a river and the fish will lay in that ambush and any bait fish that wash in but today we got a pretty strong wind coming out of the east and this tide should have been turned by now to incoming but I got here to a very large sandbar and it looks to me like this tide is still going out so might have to wait a while not much more than a puddle here but there's some small snook in it. Bring this guy up on the sand. There he is. Hey. Time to give him my fly back. So when the water's really low, clear like it is right now, I'll cut back considerably on the size of my bait fish patterns. And you can see this one's probably about three inches long in total length. And two of my favorite colors combined. It's a yellow belly and an olive top and some little stripes with some magic marker on it. And that's the guy that's working today. This flat has slim pickings right now. You can see up under these mangroves and over in the corner there, there's not even any water. It's still going out. Time to go on a hike. So I started way back there in that corner. Got two fish, both small snook. So, this low tide, negative low tide trip has actually turned into more of a scouting opportunity because the water is just so low. I mean, I have ankle high boots on and in most places it's not even above my ankles. And I'll tell you, I've really walked a long way from where I started and... Uh, I'll tell you, walking at low tide is also an incredible time to learn things. And this is an area where I drive by often. And you can see, you got a cove right here. It's got no water in it. You got a cove right here. It's got no water in it. But... What I'm finding intriguing about it is that most of this area is flat, but when you get down low, you can see that this area has quite a bit of contours, conflicting contours where those oysters start. And over here, you know, the same thing. I'll walk in a little bit closer, but I don't think I'm going to go by this spot. Now, without trying it when the water's up and the tide's moving, because these contours actually have nice drop-offs, and I'm pretty sure that this is going to hold some 
nice fish when the water's in. We could let him kneel back down again. You could really see the elevation changes right through here. And then that cut right in the middle. And it actually continues on. It gets even more built up right here. I'm trying to have the same scenario where these fish would have some huge area. Look how far they can push back up under there. So I'll put this on my list for scouting at high tide. Now this right here This is another spot that's exactly what you look for. And I know that this spot's one to fish because I just pushed about a 25 inch snook out of here that was laying in about six inches of water, just sunning himself in the mud. But what I really like about this spot is there's a lot of oysters, there's good contours, but the thing that intrigues me the most is that this water right here coming out still has current and it's flowing towards me. You can see it right. It's real gentle, but that indicates that there'd be a much stronger tide or current coming out of here when the water's higher. And you can see how the current's coming towards me and how extensive this cut is. You can even, looking back up in there, see a nice channel coming out. So this is definitely a travel route. It's big, it's wide. Another area that is very close to where I usually fish with my clients every day but it's not on my regular uh, stop list of places to try so I'll come back a couple times now and fish it at different stages of the tide and see what it's got I've been picking out some spots that I think are great but without something to compare it to, you know, you might not see the difference between what makes a good spot and a bad spot. So this little cove here, it doesn't really look entirely different from some of the spots that I consider to be really, really good. But what separates it is it's kind of a dead end. See, there's no cuts coming out from you know, somewhere in the back, there's no channel, which shows there's no current transferring, you know, from one area to another. So fish may push up in here, you know, to feed along the bushes during the high tide, but I don't think it's going to be a spot that holds fish, you know, day in, day out, like uh, some of the other spots have the potential to. Well, I'm getting closer to one of the spots that I fish regularly, and uh, I'll tell you, it kind of just looks like a ditch it's so low today. There's a little bit of a drop-off out in front of it, and I could see some mullet just cruising around. also saw a couple of small bait fish popping, but... Uh, with these conditions, I don't expect much here. I do believe there's fish in here. I don't know if it's going to come up on the camera. But you can see where the water really transfers pretty strongly from the ponds on the back of here. You know, right out this opening. And because of that, that current constantly cuts a little bit deeper channel right here. So, 
it always has potential to hold fish. We'll give it a try and see what happens. So fish in this spot really didn't produce any strike, but I had a fish blow out when my fly line landed on that point. And then this is that little bit deeper spot. You can look here how shallow it is. And you can see it drops off right in here. There's a little bit of structure, a couple of bunches of weeds, but that definitely drops off to just a little channel that's about thigh deep. And when I walked in after I fished it, I kicked two redfish out. And I was hoping that I would be able to walk all the way in, but whoa, I'm starting to go up to up to my knees in muck, so that's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna try to turn back before well scouting any further isn't gonna work out. There's where I went deep, and that's how deep it was. Pretty nasty. Lesson learned. Come here with the skiff and stay out 50 or 60 feet. Don't walk around in here. Well, it's taken me about an hour and a half, two hours maybe by now. Right. Walk this Take a dip. In this section of the bay, this is actually the furthest I've uh, ever walked from where I um, put my truck, parked my truck. And uh, I think I'm going to head back. Pressing my luck, this tide's going to turn. And uh, every day this week, when it has turned, it's come in really, really fast. So. The other thing is I'm getting to a point right here where I fish on a regular basis. That next point right there is actually a spot that I fish with my clients every day. So this cove and from this little mangrove key right here out, this is a spot that I work over on a regular basis. So. I don't need to scout this any further. So I'm going to head back and way, way out there in the distance, you could just see the dock that I jumped in off of. It's, uh, it's, it's got to be a mile and a half. So time to get my walk on. So far today, I've really only been taking footage of, you know, areas with good water transfer, you know, where I expect the fish to hold up. But I've also been finding some new areas that have not a lot of water transfer, really gnarly mud, hard to walk in, oysters around the edges and Lots and lots of leaf litter. Walk in to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, it's getting nasty. You can see all the piles and thick mats of mangrove leaves and oysters mixed in. So areas like this, this is where the redfish will go to the supermarket, you know. There'll be uh, crabs and other little bottom critters crawling all through here. And uh, when the tide comes up, they'll move right in here. In this particular spot that I'm in right now, I have caught redfish in the past. But it's been pretty inconsistent. And... Seeing it today from a different perspective with no water in it, it's kind of made me rethink how I normally fish it. And I think that in the future, I may approach it differently. I mostly set the boat up 
and pole for the mostly righty fishermen that I have on the boat. And I usually come at it from this angle. And I think by coming that way, you see where I'm looking, I actually probably silhouette myself to the fish that might be in there most of the time. So I think in the future, I'm gonna take a big wide turn out around here and come at it, throwing over that point right there. I think that might lead to some additional success here. So this is a spot that I have fished quite a bit, but by being out here today with very little water, it's given me a completely different perspective on it because what I did not know in the past was that I'm going to have to bend down here. This is actually a little island. When I get down real low here, you can see it goes right back out to the bay on the other side, which I did not know that that was a feature that existed here. But now what that tells me is that it'll be a really, really good spot for snook. And what'll happen is when the tide is outbound, they'll lay up right on this side, waiting for anything that pushes through that opening and back out to here. And then on the incoming tide, they could stage up on the opposite end of this, where it comes back out into the bay and uh, have the same situation. You know, they're always gonna be facing into the current and uh, Whenever they can let food come to them, they're going to do that. That's the easy way to eat. I just had to take a walk back in here because this is a spot that I regularly pull into. When I do, it's usually about 12, 13 inches deep. But you can see it's pretty nasty mud. I'm going to see that. Lots of leaf debris. A little bit of a channel right here. This is always where I find them. Right out. Pushed right up in here around this leaf debris. Just a good spot. Oh, my feet are getting stuck for them to come in and forage around. Bird tracks everywhere. I must be going the right way. This is a cove that I fish all the time. But... Like a lot of the places I've been today, I have not ever walked this at an extremely low tide. It's always when I have the skiff. And this is a proven redfish spot. I've had lots of clients get their redfish out of this cove. But what's interesting is that I'm seeing some things today that I normally can't see. What I never realized before is just how much contour change there is back in this corner. Now I know that where we get these fish is right on the edge of a drop-off. So I've walked further back in here now and I've been on relatively firm bottom but it's starting to transition into a lot more mud and a lot more debris so the redfish that we have taken in here have been pushed way up 
in the back here. They've been taken at high tide. Now the walking's getting a little difficult, but you can see just how much leaf litter is in there, especially here. And most all of the fish we've taken have been right on this point, right at the edge of this leaf litter. There's a little tiny bit of a drop off. Maybe a little bit of water transfer out of the back. But this is just another perfect area. And now that I see that, I know right where these points are, which and how far back it cuts up in there. It's really extreme. Little egret just come flying out. How far that it can get up on that side. So I think maybe a little more patience and a little more of trying to get exactly the right cast back up under these might lead to some more fish in the future. So now I've moved back, starting to walk out of that cove, one of my good spots. And from this perspective, I'm thinking that a slightly different approach might be the way to play this. And uh, what I'm thinking about trying now. You know, and it never hurts to try a lot of different ways to fish the same spot. But what I'm thinking now is that this spot right here might be better fished with a strategic pinning of the boat. You know, maybe pushing in off of this point right here, and just nudging it out. Because normally I pull in real slow and let my clients take a few casts. But I'm thinking now it might be the spot to spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Maybe pin the boat right here. Let the bow drift into the center and then watch it and then slowly pick spots to cast up and around here. And I think that if you get right on the correct tide, you should be able to see the fish moving around and rummaging around in there. So food for thought definitely a technique I'm gonna try in the near future we're back to that original sandbar that I started this journey out on and see it's clearly smaller than it was before the over here there's some bait fish jumping and mullet Coming, so let me get in here and take a few more casts before I end my day. And I'm pretty confident that at the stage of this tide, I should have some luck. So this is one of my favorite places here. You can see, oh look at the size of all those fish coming out. That is, they're either giant mullet, or there's a half a dozen real good snook moving out right here. So I'm going to turn the camera off and lay a cast in front of them. So, as I expected, it didn't take me very long to hook up a small snook, and he's off. Well, I switched to a little bit heavier fly because the current's up, and I'm onto a snook now that's got a little bit more size to him. There he is. A 
good uh, payoff for all the walking that I did. All the scouting. Just had another snook briefly come up and try to get that fly out of his mouth. All right. He's about done, so I'm going to pull down on him and walk him in here where he can't swim anymore. There you go. There's our guy. Not a bad one. He really ate that fly. There's what he ate. Let's get him back in. Time to call it quits. I uh, wound up having a nice little run of fish in this one spot right here and uh, just tried to muscle one out from under the bushes and he popped me off. Not because he was unusually large, but because I had a bunch of smaller ones that frayed the line up, I probably should have cut off and retied, but a good note to end the day. So, I hope you enjoyed my footage today, give you um, a little bit of insight into the, you know, my world and uh, how my mind works at trying to uh, put my clients uh, onto fish every day and uh, more specifically on fish on the fly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.